you want to join us as we testify to the goodness of the Lord. I am who I am because of you. If it had not been for you, tell me where would I be? I was lost and sinking deep in sin. But you reached out your hand and rescued me. No one else can do the things you do. Because no one else but you. I am who I am because of you. If it had not been for you, tell me where would I be? I was lost and sinking deep in sin. But you reach out your hand and rescued me. No one else can do the things you do. Oh God, cause no one else but you. None yet. No one else but you. No one no trouble, no one no no one else but you. I never thought that you could love someone like me. You gave up your life for me. You even go on and call me your very own. So grateful for your love. Your mercy and grace. No one can do the things you do for me. Eh, no one else but you. I never thought that you could love someone like me. And you gave up your life for me. Yeah. You even go on and call me your very own. Your very own. So grateful for your love. Your mercy and grace. No one can do the things you do for me. Yeah. No one else but you. Everybody say. No one yeah. But no No trouble. No one No one else but you. No one else but you. So where would I be? So amazing, it's better than life itself. Go 
It's another Tuesday morning. My name is Bernard Adiakwa from the Powerhouse Ministries International, and I'm bringing you the spoken word for today. We have been speaking about faith over the past few weeks, and I trust that you've been blessed. Today, I want to continue and talk about using your faith, using your faith. And I read from the book of Romans chapter 1, verse 16. The Bible says, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Verse 17, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. The just is not going to live by his own ideas or his own thoughts or his own methods. Those justified and made righteous by God are going to live a life of faith. Galatians chapter 3 verse 11 re-echoes this truth. It says, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident for the just shall live by faith. Again, in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 38, it says, now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. The difference between living under the law and living under the faith is that under the law, you can be detached from what your actions, but by faith, you are completely immersed and identify with the things you do. It is not an isolation from what you do, but you identify because you believe it. It is part of you and you do and obey the word as a nature. In Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4, that is in the Old Testament, it talks about, behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. So you find this faith, life of faith being echoed through the Old Testament and the New Testament. Faith is a life. Faith is not a spare tie or a parachute which is used in times of trouble. It is a daily lifestyle that pleases God, where you trust in God and you believe God and you live by faith in God. Use your faith and grow it. And so today, we are going to go over some of the things the patriarchs did with their faith in their daily walk with the Lord. And so turn your Bible to Hebrews chapter 11 and let's see how to live by faith. And I'm going to read the whole chapter and pick up various characters and then we shall talk about how they used their faith. In the book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 4, the first example we see of faith being used, let's see how it is used. It says, by faith... Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it being dead, yet speaketh. What did Abel use his faith for? Abel used his faith to give an offering. It is interesting that the first recorded patriarch, or the first recorded example of faith, is in giving. Somebody offered, he didn't receive but he first initiated by giving to God, even though physically he couldn't see God. He rose beyond his natural side and gave to God an excellent sacrifice. And God acknowledged that sacrifice and blessed him. So you go beyond what, how you feel and what you naturally see 
and recognize that what you are doing is going straight to God. Your prayer can be offered in faith. Your fasting can be offered in faith. Everything you do to the Lord, praise and worship, give it as an offering, knowing that God who is, is receiving your sacrifice. So the first example of faith is in an offering, and it doesn't start with receiving. Abel used his faith to give an offering to God in sacrifice. The second example of faith, verse 5, by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. You can use your faith for great spiritual encounters. Use your faith to have deep experiences with God. Enoch used his faith and was translated so that he should not see death. Use your faith to have encounters with God that will deepen your relationship with God. So that you come to a point of knowing that God is real. I don't know how anybody can explain God to you, but you get to know him by faith. May you encounter divine experiences. May you encounter angelic forces. May you encounter the presence of God and see Jesus Christ so that your faith will be founded on a belief system that is sure because you've had an experience and not just heard what somebody has told you. Verse 7, it says, By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an act to the saving of his house by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Again, we see Noah being warned of God. Noah had never seen a flood before. He had not seen the earth covered with a flood, but he was warned of God in a dream to escape the flood. God will reach out to you and speak to you and show you how to avoid unnecessary death. You can use your faith for so many things. So we see how Abel used his faith. We've seen how Noah used his faith. Let's see how Abraham used his faith, the father of faith. In verse 8, it says, By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out, not knowing whither he went. How frightening can it be to say you have heard the voice of God and you step out from your comfort zone into a place you have no idea for. So here we see faith to obey God's call. May you use your faith to serve God. May you use your faith like Abraham to step out from the known into the unknown in service to God because you have heard God's voice. You can also use your faith to serve God. You can use your faith to pioneer things. You can use your faith to move out of your comfort zone and defy what people think about you in obedience to the call of God over your life. In verse 11, we see Sarah also using her faith. Through faith, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. This I call faith for breakthroughs. Faith to defy natural limitations. Faith to conceive a child beyond doctor's report. Breaking natural limitations. Use your faith even in your old age. There's a lot to learn about Sarah from this verse. But the import is that Sarah at an old age, defying natural limitations, received strength. Remember, God had spoken to Abraham. But Sarah, who was part of Abraham's life and was going to conceive, also stretched out in faith. You may not have been the direct beneficiary of God's word, but you can be a part of what God is doing. Release your faith and receive strength where you are weak. Strength to defy natural limitations. Strength to do the impossible, even in your old age. It doesn't matter whether you, you started early or whether you've been left behind. Your faith will cause you to receive strength from God. You will no longer be weak. You will do exploits even in your old age. So as you continue reading, you'll find various patriarchs using their faith at different stages of their lives to break natural limitations, to do exploits, to give to God, to cross over every hindrance. You can also use your faith. In verse 17, by faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. Faith for serving God is possible. Faith for sacrificing great and costly things is also possible. Use your faith. Like Abraham, take something that is expensive, your Isaac. Don't only give mediocre gifts. Don't give average gifts. Be prepared to give off your very best. That which you prize and that which you possess, that which you struggle to long for, a great and costly precious gift. You can, by faith, offer it to God. And this is what Abraham did. And so you can also step out 
and give an offering to God that is memorial. By faith, in verse 20, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. Use your faith to bless your children. As you leave this earth, leave a blessing behind. Let your footprints be left behind with a blessing over the next generation. The next generation will be blessed and not cursed. It will defy every natural hardships and economic hardships because of your blessing. Bless your children. Bless your grandchildren. Bless your household by faith in the name of Jesus. As a parent, you see from the example of verse 23, by faith Moses, when he was born, was hit three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child. So parents can use their faith to preserve their children's lives. In the midst of chaos, in the midst of a genocide, their children can be saved because somebody used his faith. You do not need to conform. You can serve God in spite of the negative environment. Use your faith to choose God over every other and serve him. You can use your faith to deny yourself the pleasures of this world. As we continue in verse 24, we see by faith Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Why? Esteeming the reproach of Christ, greater riches than the treasures of Egypt, because he had recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. It doesn't matter which king is terrorizing you. It doesn't matter who in authority is imposing limitations on you. By faith, you will overcome. And so you find out that faith can be used in every aspect of your life. Whether you are under a king you don't like, whether you are limited by natural circumstances, whether you have to give an offering, whether you have to rise up in prayer, whatever you do, you can do it by faith. In verse 32, I conclude, what more shall I say? For time will fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah, of David also and Samuel and of the prophets. Can you see your name there? I want you to mention your name. And of Daniel and of Mansa and of Pastor David and of Pastor Bernard. Verse 33. Through faith, they subdued kingdoms. Can you imagine a whole kingdom coming up against you? But by faith, you subdue kingdoms. By faith, you will subdue governments. By faith, you subdue opposition against you. Through faith, they wrought righteousness. When people were falling into sin, they stood up and remained righteous. They did not go with the sway of the crowd, but they stood up by faith and isolated themselves and became righteous. Through faith, they obtained promises. Promises are there to be obtained, but you step out in faith, the promise of God over your life, you will obtain it. They stopped the mouths of animals and wild life. They quenched the violence of fire. They escaped the edge of the sword. Out of weakness were made strong. They waxed valiant in fight and turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trials of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sown asunder. They were tempted. They were slain with a sword. They wandered about in sheepskin and goatskin, being destitute, afflicted, and tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and in caves. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. My dear, you can use your faith through destitution, through conflicts, through perils, it doesn't matter what is happening on the outside. Your faith is intact because it is in God. And this God we believe in will deliver us from the mouth of lions, from the, the fire, from every situation that rises up against us. This is how we use our faith. Don't rest and use your faith only in a church service. Go beyond into your home, into your school, into your community. Use your faith. Obtain the promise of God over your life. Maybe you just got married. You are looking for a fruit of the womb. By faith, there is a God who does the impossible. With him, all things are possible. Keep using your faith and see the promises of God. I'm going to come your way again next week with another spoken word that will add and change your life. God bless you. Peace, shalom, and life to you. Amen. Amen.